CDDA audio has now been implemented on the Mr. PlayStation Core. CDDA is a CD format that has audio tracks that can be read in a standard CD audio player. Developers use this format to get really high quality music and speech in their games. However, this format takes up a lot more data on the disc. This new update gets the PlayStation Core feature complete in the audio department. It's a pretty big milestone for the Core because now all major and original features of the PlayStation are implemented. This doesn't mean that the Core is bug free though. There is still work left to be done with that. Another development that I saw on Discord was work on getting CHD images loading. CHDs are a compressed image format originally used by MAME to compress hard drive images of arcade machines. It then was used by other emulator developers to compress CD-ROM images. So having your CDs in a CHD format will save you space and allow you to store more games. Another feature of CHDs is that it is a lossless compression format, so you know you're getting a bit-for-bit -bit copy of the original CD-ROM. The actual development of the Linux part of CDDA Audio was done by Sorgelig, the maintainer of the Mr. FPGA project. If possible, please support the hard work Mr. FPGA developers do by joining their Patreons or any other support platforms they might be part of. Some new updates to the Saturn core have been announced. For VDP1, 8-bit frame buffer support has been added. This helps get Virtual Fighter and VR Soccer running. The CPU can now access the frame buffer, and this update helps get Blast Chamber and Bottom of the Ninth running. For VDP2, there were fixes to zooming in in high res mode, which affected Virtual Fighter. And with the SCU Math Crow processor, it had a DMA access speed bug fix and this got 20 more games playable. We also got news on getting the core to work with one SD RAM module. While it's not working with one RAM module yet, the developer now has both memory modules working in a way that might give the possibility of the core working with one memory stick. There are still a lot of unknowns regarding this, and any further questions on getting one RAM stick to work will only be answered with further core development. Kitrinx, the current developer of the Mr. Jaguar core, has given an update on its status and the challenges with creating a Jaguar core. On a forum post on the Mr. FPGA forums, it is said that the Jaguar core has the 68,000 CPU, the OS ROM, the cart bus, the DRAM bus, and the Tom and Jerry chips fully implemented using documentation from Atari. The challenge to get it running is that the real console used a very wide and relatively fast DRAM bus. This makes it seem likely that dual SD RAM sticks would be required to get it to run on the Mr. FPGA. Also, if I'm understanding the post correctly, the real Tom and Jerry chips have some bugs on them that are difficult to identify. These chips are also difficult to understand how they work, which further complicates the debugging of the DMA and memory timing. And if you want to see a game running on the core, Twitter user Sentian6 posted a video of a work in progress build of the core and as of now, the core requires two SD RAM sticks. Play. Core developer Hotego has released a Midnight Resistance core for his Patreon members. This game runs on the same hardware as Sly Spy and Boulder Dash. He also posted some updates on what his development plans are for 2022. He plans to do development for the Neo Geo Pocket, Gradius 2, Sega System 18 Arcade, Mortal Kombat, the Atari Jaguar, and other arcade cores. Regarding other arcade cores, the Deco system which runs Robocop should be complete by March. System 16 should also be complete this year. For Toa Blend games, the Twin Cobra bootleg schematics are done but core development hasn't started yet. For PGM and CPS3 systems, there will be a long wait before any core will exist. The extraction of the schematics will begin this year, but development of the FPGA core itself will start in 2023. Even with all this new development, Hotego still plans on using one week per month to deal with maintenance and bug fixes to current cores, which shows he's not willing to let his older cores die and rot away.
A new arcade core has been added. It's for Gremlins Blockade hardware and the core was developed by Jimmy Stones. The Blockade hardware was an arcade board from the 1970s. The game Blockade was actually the first of what are commonly known as snake games today. So this arcade board does have some historical significance. The core currently supports four games, which are Blockade, Co-Motion, Hustle, and Blasto. I previously reported about a custom Sega Master System boot screen that was themed after the Mr. FPGA project. Little did I know that the creator Uber Yoji also created boot ROMs for other cores. These boot ROMs add a little fun to loading up your Mr. Cores. The creator wants to develop boot files for all cores that support auto booting from a ROM. Once they are all done, the plan is to release the source code and build instructions for people that want to do remixes. If you want to try out the current ones he has, check out his Twitter account or visit his GitHub. And other cores receiving small updates and fixes are Arcade Astrocade, ZX Spectrum, ZX Next, TS Conf, ZX81, PET2001, C64, C16, VIC20, MSX, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy, Sega Master System, ColecoVision, the Amiga Core, X68000, PC8801, and the Coco 3 Core. Check out the Mr. FPGA forums for the exact details of the fixes and updates. So that's it for this episode. I provided links to all my sources in the description. Make sure you also check out RetroRGB.com to see this video post in blog form and to get more retro related content. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and its bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.